Hey class, welcome back. This is week four of CISS 316, Cisco Network Academy, Cyber Security Operation. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Um, before we go into this week, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, everyone's doing very well on the labs. Uh, great job. I'm happy that to see that um, people are submitting early. I've been trying to grade as they come in, but um, great job so far. And in addition to that, um, spring break is next week. All right. And so I won't be seeing you guys until the 20th or sorry, the 21st. That's the two Thursdays from now. And so in lieu of that, I'm going to release weeks because this is an eight week course. I'm going to release weeks four and five together. They're not uh, week five is very small. And so I think you guys can finish all of, all of it within one week. So you guys get that full spring break off. But if not, you know, you can work on both of them throughout the next two weeks. All right. So just in general, we're not going to have instruction next week, but I will release uh, both week four and week five content uh, for you guys to go ahead and try to finish off. All right. Um, but usually in the second eight weeks, there is really isn't much time for spring break, unfortunately, because the last day of instruction is on the 12th. So just wanted to go over that a little bit. So um, I'll have due dates and everything like that, just to make sure everyone's um, is aware of it. Anyways, so yeah, today I'm going to be going over uh, weeks four and five for you guys. So go ahead and jump into modules. And so it's really going to be quite similar to last week, but with the whole net labs. But in addition to that, we're going to do some reading. All right. So for module four, technically the labs are going to cover chapters four through nine, but we already read chapters four and five in our last module or two modules ago. Okay. So no reading in terms of no need to read chapters four and five unless you need to review it for the labs. All right. As for new reading for module four, it's going to be chapters six, seven, eight and nine. OK, so as for read new reading six through nine for module four and then labs for module four is going to be chapters four through nine. And you'll see the number of labs if you go through there's going to be about 10 labs here okay and again i will put up the word document version so you guys can just download it and then fill it as you go all right i feel like that's the easier way and it would be helpful if it was in like a different color or you highlight your answer in the labs just so i can immediately see your answer um, right on the spot. Okay. Anyways, um, so yeah, for that's for module four in terms of reading and um, labs. Now, in addition to that, you also do have a discussion board. So for the discussion board, we're going to be talking about OWASP. All right. Um, I would like you guys to read several of these. Uh, articles right here and then explore the OWASP web page, right? OWASP is essentially, um, stands for open web source security project. I think that's what, um, the acronym stands for. There's so many, <laughs> um, acronyms in security and networking in general. You get confused sometimes, but yeah, essentially to summarize it, online web applications there's um you know there's standards and protocols security standards and protocols that you know is recommended and if you look up OWASP uh, top 10 OWASP uh top 10 you can actually see uh the top 10 what is it called different security risks per web application and they always bring out with new yearly um, top 10 security vulnerabilities or risks 
in terms of web applications. So this, uh, these top 10 are the different methods of attack and ex uh, exploitation that are used to, I guess, hack or exploit a web application, right? So as for 2021 right now, because 22, 22, 2022 hasn't come out yet, you know, the number one um, way that a threat actor exploits or gains access to a web application is through some type of broken access control, all right? And then, you know, it kind of lists down the different, like the top 10 ways of how a hacker will try to infiltrate and break into a web application, right? So we got broken access control, uh, cryptographic failures, injection, insecure design, security misconfiguration. This is a big one specifically. I think this one will go up, especially with more cloud being um, integrated into our technology, into our business processes, and just the lack of knowledge of cloud computing and uh, securing cloud infrastructure is definitely something that um, we're lacking general in the industry. So most, uh, I believe, most, um, I guess, attacks are in the future down the line it's going to come from security misconfigurations on the human side right on our side but you know that's everything's still up in the air you never know what's going to happen right and then vulnerable and outdated components ident identification and authentication failures software and data integrity failures security logging and monitoring failures and server side request forgery so those are our top 10 right now, but essentially um, it's standard awareness of different web application security, um, uh, you know, vulnerabilities or risk or was it um, kind of like the threat landscape of how an attacker will try to exploit a web application. These are top. It's top 10. And then they kind of like compare it to every year to see what's gone up, what's gone down. Um, trying to identify the trends of different threat actors and what's being used more often and, you know, what's not being, you know, what um, threat actors are moving away from. Maybe it's because our security products are doing better of, you know, identifying one specific type of attack uh, while another specific type of attack is not going unrecognized. So threat actors will move towards using that specific type of, you know, attack. So it's just a way to, um, this top 10 list is just a way for, um, you know, security professionals to kind of understand, you know, what's being used out there. Anyways, uh, back to, you know, the actual module itself, you know, I have a couple articles here as well that I would like you guys to go ahead and read, which we're going to be talking about security as a service and um, uh, managed service providers. So I'd like you to read the following articles and then explore the OWASP page and then answer some of these questions down here. Respond to at least two classmates and... Um, yeah, that should uh, be it for this specific discussion, right? It's going to be due on the 20th by 11.59 p.m. In addition, you have your labs, okay? Now, let's see. That's for module four, all right? Now, module five. All right, so module five, we're going to be reviewing chapters 10 through 17, all right? So you have to read chapters 10 through 17. We have six labs due, okay? But the six labs are only gonna be on chapters 10 and 17, all right? So just six labs. Um, I kinda pick, picked which labs are kinda important. So um, there wasn't really anything specific for 11 through 16. So just 10 
and labs for 10 and 17, but I would like you guys to read 10 through 17 regardless. Okay. And besides that, um, besides the labs and the reading for module five, uh, there is another discussion that I would like you guys to do. Okay. So first I would like you to read this article called hack this become a command line assassin. So usually threat actors are really good with the command line, regardless of the operating system, whether you're in Linux or in Windows, you have to know how to use the command line or the terminal um, if you're in Linux. And because that's how you navigate, that's how you send commands through, what's it called? A system. Usually threat actors are not gonna to try to take over your mouse and click around and start typing. It's so much easier to just send commands directly to the terminal or the, uh, the command line. But anyways, um, I'd like you guys to read this article and then use your favorite search engine, Google, um, whatever, ask Jeeves. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's still even a thing anymore, but um, you know, find a second article that discusses shell scripting. Okay. Once you find that article, go ahead and summarize it in about one to two paragraphs and then post it in the discussion board and then respond to at least two other classmates. Okay. And that will also be due on April 20th, 11.59 PM. Okay. With your labs and you know, that's about it really for these next two weeks. So I'm going to open up modules three and I mean, sorry, modules four and five. You're essentially reading um, chapters five through 17 or sorry, six through 17. Okay. And you're doing and there's 16 labs, it looks like and two discussion boards to summarize everything. Okay, you have two weeks to do it. You know, um, we have to keep on pace. Uh, unfortunately, it's an eight week course, so it gets a little difficult. We're trying to make sure that we get all the content in that we need. So, um, you know, make sure you spend, allocate some time. You have two weeks, plenty of time, so you yeah, should be good to go. But if you have any questions, other than that, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help out. Um, but with that, you know, I hope you guys, um, you know, work hard. Take some time off for spring break as well. You know, relax a little bit. I know it's been kind of hectic. But, you know, enjoy yourselves, right? It's the journey, right? Enjoy the journey. Anyways, with that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. And I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, have a good one. Bye.